the sponge that looks like a number of pop beads in which Gil Norris pronounced as Gertie Colia uh, is often or usually uh, pronounced as Gertie, Gertie Celia. And it's a problematic sponge. It's very different from anything living today. Some have questioned its sponge affinities. Uh, and like many other Paleozoic life forms uh, that don't quite fit into modern phyla or modern classes, uh, many Paleozoic forms are uh, puzzling in their taxonomy. And some consider them to be extinct uh, classes uh, of possibly sponges or, in some cases, even extinct phyla. The uh, Receptaculites is an example of this. Uh, Receptaculites and Ischidites are uh, generally, in older textbooks, classified in the sponges, but they definitely are not sponges. They have been variously considered as being members of the calcareous algae. They've also been considered to be uh, representatives of their own extinct phylum but they definitely are not sponges. They do not have spicules. They do not have any of the, uh, any of the uh, morphologic or structural uh, features that characterize the sponges. Another group that is definitely not a sponge are the archaeocyathids. The archaeocyathids are generally considered to be representatives of an extinct phylum. They're predominantly restricted to the Lower Cambrian, and they're a very distinctive fossil in Lower Cambrian limestones. They were also one of the first reforming organisms, other than the blue-green algae or the cyanobacteria. The archaeocyathids formed some of the very, very earliest known reefs. Chancelloria is presented in the sponge tape by Gil Norris as being a sponge, but it is very, very questioned as to whether it really is. Uh, the evidence seems to be that Chancelloria represents some uh, extinct body plan of organism, possibly little plates that were uh, covered the, the body of a uh, uh, kind of a um, fleshy organism, uh, which um, uh, was covered like a suit of mail by the little buttons that uh, re represent Chancelloria. And uh, most workers have considered Chancelloria as definitely not a sponge. It belongs to one of these uh, very, very problematic groups of fossils found at the very beginning of the Paleozoic era, a group of fossils called the Timotian. And there are a number of other very, very strange organisms that appear in, in the Timotian, which have no relationships to later organisms, not even organisms in the Cambrian. But Chancelloria continues into the Cambrian and occurs all the way into the upper Cambrian, where it then go ex goes extinct. This fossil you're seeing on the screen that looks like a coral is a peculiar thing that um, uh, some have considered maybe a sponge. It's called Wapericonus. And it is found in limited areas only in New Zealand. And unlike most of the uh, problematic fossils that you find in the rock record, uh, Wapericonus is found in the Mesozoic. Uh, most problematic and totally puzzling enigmas, paleontological enigmas, are found in the lower Paleozoic, most of them in the Cambrian. But Wapericonus is a Mesozoic enigma, found only in New Zealand. The general view was that life uh, was created in the Cambrian, and the, the Cambrian radiation event, or the appearance of Cambrian fossils in abundance, marked the beginning of life. When The Origin of Species was published, people realized that if evolution was true, that there should be a fossil record much, much earlier, much, much uh, earlier than that of the Cambrian. And people started to look and spend the necessary time and effort and blood, sweat, and tears that you have to spend to uh, locate uh, good fossils. And this occurrence of Eozoon canadense, this peculiar uh, dome-like structure, uh, was found in strata uh, in, in Quebec. And there were those, 
that uh, said it was definitely a fossil. Uh, and they were in pretty good company. Charles Lyell, for one, considered it to be a bona fide fossil. Charles Darwin considered it to be uh, a number of uh, late 19th century paleontologists uh, considered it to be a bona fide, very, very uh, early and very primitive life form. What they considered, considered it to be was some type of giant foraminifera or giant protozoan, which they called a rhizopod. And uh, it's not too far from that to go into the sponges, because uh, sponges in many ways are simply a collection of, of protozoans uh, put on a scaffolding, put on a spicule system or an, a skeleton. So uh, there were those that said Eozoon was also a type of sponge. But the Eozoon question reigned throughout the uh, last third of the 19th century. And by the early part of this century, uh, the controversy kind of died down. The general view that prevailed uh, in this century is that Eozoon is probably a pseudofossil, is a structure that looks like a fossil but isn't. At best, it might be some kind of a structure produced by blue-green algae, some type of a what is called a stromatolite. But the Eozoon question reigned throughout the uh, last third of the 19th century. And by the early part of this century, uh, the controversy kind of died down.